Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's talk about the terrain and the color of the planet Venus. Well, first of all, the surface was not visible to us when we first started taking pictures with telescopes, and all we could see was just a faint haze of the cloud cover permanently hiding the surface from us. It turns out that even in visible light, we couldn't even see much about the distinction in the clouds themselves, and so we didn't even know if there was a lot of interaction between the clouds, that there was a lot of motion in the atmosphere, we just really had no idea. Eventually, we were able to fly by the planet, take up some, take some closer pictures, and we're able to put some filters on there and also look at the cloud cover in ultraviolet radiation. And we began to see a lot more distinction in the cloud cover, and also we began to see a lot more motion down at the lower levels, realizing that there was a lot of cloud motion and therefore a lot of motion in the atmosphere. We then discovered that in the upper layers of the atmosphere, below the cloud tops, but above the lower part of the atmosphere, that the motion of the atmosphere is as fast that it probably circumvents or circumnavigates the planet in about four days. So a lot more was then discovered. And then eventually we began to take pictures from, the, from um, uh, satellites onto the surface of Venus, looking through the cloud cover using radar imaging. We also were able to land a couple, of, a couple of spacecraft onto the surface, not us, but the Russians. They were able to build spacecraft strong enough to withstand the enormous temperatures and pressures on the surface, and they lasted long enough to give us some view from two different locations what the surface looked like. Now, they did some color enhancing, but it was seen that the coloration, of course, was fairly similar to what we would see on the Earth. Even with a thick atmosphere and a thick cloud cover, the coloration was basically kind of like a grayish, brownish kind of color. So when we started making radar imaging, we used that brown color to kind of simulate what we thought the coloration would be of the surface of Venus. It's, this is probably a little bit overdone. It's probably a little bit... Um, more bland than that, but the higher coloration gave us a better way of, of making distinction between the different features on the surface. So this is typically what people think about when they look at the surface of Venus, at least through radar imaging, and kind of get a feel of that the surface kind of looks at this brownish orangish color. It's probably a little bit more subdued like we see on the color pictures that were taken by the Venera spacecraft that were landed by the Russians onto the surface. So to see the surface, definitely the only way to do that, to get a good feel, is to use radar imaging. And we've done quite a job using the Magellan spacecraft to take very high resolution radar pictures of the surface. Now, 80% of the surface is covered by what we'd consider fairly smooth planes with little elevation variation. So we see that vast stretches of the surface is relatively smooth and relatively undulated by mountains. There's only a few regions on the planet where there's higher mountains to be found. Uh, two of those main regions are called highland regions and we have special names for them. We call them Ishtar Terra for the one that is closer to the North Pole and Aphrodite Terra which is a region just below the equator stretching across the planet at a certain distance. They're not very large regions, so they're kind of like small continents. If you can imagine that maybe 70% of the surface of the planet Venus would be covered by water, then those regions would definitely stick out of the water like continents do on the Earth. There is a third one further down uh, that is somewhat smaller than the other two, not quite as high in elevation, but it's also considered a highland region, so that's called Lada Terra. So there's three main regions on the planet that probably are the size of the continental United States or the size of China or the size of Australia that uh, stick out quite a bit higher than the rest of the surface. So let me remove the picture here. Then another very interesting aspect is that essentially the planet is upside down. What do we mean by that? Well, in our solar system, all planets revolve around the sun in a counterclockwise direction. So if the sun is over here, looking from the north, all the planets revolve around the sun like this. And the vast majority of the planets also rotate on their axis in a counterclockwise direction, just like the Earth does. But we believe that somewhere in the past, Venus was hit by something very large, like in the early bombardment stage of the solar system, which caused the planet to turn upside down. Now, notice what happens when you turn a planet upside down. 
Of course, the rotation is not going to stop and start turning in the opposite direction. The planet would now be rotating in a clockwise direction rather than a counterclockwise direction. So this is the normal way that most planets will revolve around the sun and rotate about their axis. But if the planet, for some reason, is turned upside down, you notice now that the rotation is in a clockwise direction. So the planet Venus is essentially upside down. So that the north pole of Venus is actually on the south pole, and the south pole of Venus is actually at the north pole. You can imagine that would create a lot of problems when we start talking about where some of the formations and mountains and the valleys and so forth are on the surface. So even though the planet Venus is upside down, we're not going to call this the north pole on Venus and this the south pole on Venus. And typically that is the, the way it is done. In some cases, they, they keep records and, and, and so they say, well, Victorially, when we use the right-hand rule, this would be the North Pole, that's the South Pole, but we're not going to do that. We're simply going to realize the planet is upside down. Here's the North Pole, there's the South Pole, just to, just to eliminate the confusion. So now when you see maps of the planet, again, the top will be the North, the bottom will be the South, even though we actually know that the planet is upside down. But we'll ignore that part at this point. So, that's the basic structure of the planet. It's from the surface, you would say, oh, it's just basically plains, not a lot of mountains. That's true. But when we start looking at the details, you'll see there's actually quite a bit to be discovered about the planet Venus.